Today, we're going to update last week's auto material and add the ability to paint materials on top of it to give us more control of where the materials are applied so we can manually direct things where we need to. So last week we created this really cool landscape material that automatically applies rock on the sides of slopes, grass in the flat areas, and also sprinkles snow at higher elevations. And all of this is done for you so you don't actually have to manually paint anything. But the problem we came up with at the end of our tutorial last time is what if we actually do want to manually apply some materials? What if I want to create uh, an area down here in the flatlands that has snow on it? Or what if I want to apply some of this rock material uh, to a flat area? In that case, we're going to need to update our auto material to add the ability to paint on it, uh, just like we've done previously uh, with our last project. So let's take a look at our landscape material. I've gone in and cleaned this up a little bit and added some uh, group comments. Uh, so let's just do a quick review. Here we have our slope material and it's based uh, and it's blending between dirt and cliff uh, based on the elevation. Here we have our flat material and it's blending between grass and moist stone also based on the elevation. And then here we have the mask that is blending between uh, the slope material and the flat material. And then here we have the mask that blends, uh, that adds our snow on the top of things. So here we have our two blends, we have our snow material, and finally we split things up with our get material attributes node and pass them into our root. Now one thing that I did do is I started using this get material attributes and this was based on uh, one of the comments, so I really appreciate the person that clued me into using this node. Uh, before, I was using uh, the break material attributes node. Just quickly, let me show you the difference here. If I use break material attributes, it has all of them listed. But if I use get material attributes, you can see it has none. But then if I come over here to the properties, it's an array, so I can add as many as I want. So I can add base color, metallic, specular. And each of these slots, I can define it and put whatever I want in it. So I made one like this that only has base color, specular, roughness, normal, and ambient occlusion, which are the material properties that we're using in our landscape. You can do the same thing with a set. So you can do set material attributes and add things and this allows you to group them into one material so it's kind of like the opposite and I've gone through all of my functions and where I had make material attributes instead of make I use set and where I had break material attributes I replaced it with get and that cleans things up a lot. Alright so now let's get to the task of adding the ability to paint uh, our material layers. So the first thing that we need to do is add a landscape layer blend node. And this node is empty at first and we're going to need to add some layers. So over here on the properties I can add elements. So there's my first layer and I'm going to open this up and give it a name and the layer of this one is going to be auto and my preview weight is going to be one. And this is the base layer of my landscape. So everything that's happening here in my auto material is going to plug into this base layer, just like this. And then any layers that I make on top of this, I'll be able to paint those on top of uh, what's happening with my auto material. So here's my layer blend node. I need to go ahead and add the rest of the layers. So I'm going to add one layer for the flat areas of my landscape. And this one is going to be a height blend. I'm going to add another layer for 
the slope areas of my landscape. And notice that I'm giving these 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 names here. The names are important um, because I need to use them later. And I'll show you that in a second. And then for my final layer, I'm going to do another layer that is the snow. And notice that as I've been adding these layers over here, my layer blend node now has additional sockets. So I have my first socket here for the auto, which is my entire auto material. My second socket here is for my flat. So I want to come over here to my flat material and grab the blended material here and plug it into my flat layer. And then I want to grab the height as well and plug that into height flat. All right, my third layer is for slope. So I'm gonna come over here to my slope material and grab my blended material and plug that into my third layer. And the same thing with the height. And then finally for my snow, I can take my snow material here and plug it into layer snow and the same thing with the height. And so now with this layer blend, I have the ability to layer up all these individual materials on top of the auto material itself. So now if I take the output of my layer blend and wire it into get material attributes, once those layers are blended together, then my get material attributes will split up the individual attributes and plug them in here. Now the last thing that I need to do in my material for this to work is I need to handle my displacement. And that's just a little bit more complicated. In order to make that work, I need to use landscape layer sample nodes. And so first thing that I'm gonna do is grab this blended height and add a linear interpolate. And I'm gonna blend between the height of my auto material and the height of my flat material. So I'm gonna come over here and grab, grab my flat material height and plug that into my lerp. And for the sample, we're gonna use our flat layer. So I'm gonna sample the flat layer mask to determine whether to show the height of the auto material or the height of the flat layer. I need to do that same thing again And then notice that I'm doing this in the same order as my layer blend here. So I'm blending between my auto layer and my flat layer. Now I'm gonna blend between the result of that and my slope layer. And if I copy this guy here, my sample flat, and instead of flat, I'm gonna replace that with slope. And now I need to do one more for the snow, so I'm gonna wire the result of that into my third lerp and then take the height from my snow and wire that into B of my lerp and comp copy my landscape uh, sample node here and type snow over here. Great, so now I'm taking my height from my auto material and blending it with the height from my flat, then taking the result of that and blending it with the height of my slope, then taking the result of that and blending it with the height, height of my snow. And then I can wire that into the height input here of my landscape displacement node. Okay, and with this material, we're all ready to switch over to our landscape and start painting our layers. So here's our landscape and you can see that all of a sudden everything has turned black. But don't panic, everything's actually fine. What we need to do is come over here to our modes, switch into landscape mode, and then click this paint tab. And what you can see here is I should have the target layers showing up in this area over here, but I don't. And what I need to do to fix that is just reapply my advanced landscape material instance. So I'm gonna grab that and drag it into uh, my landscape uh, material slot 
And as soon as I do that, you can see that now my layers are showing up. I have auto, flat, slope, and snow. And the last thing that I need to do before I can start painting is I need to add these create layer info items. This first one that I'm going to create is going to take a while. Uh, so don't worry if it takes a while for you. Um, just let it do its thing and when it's done, we'll add the rest of them. So I'm going to add a non or I'm going to add a weight blended layer. And I'm going to put it in my procedural shared assets folder. Okay, I've got my layer info, info assigned to my auto layer here, and I went ahead and assigned the layer info to my other three layers as well. And so now that I have the layer info created for all four of my layers, I'm ready to start painting. So let's come down here and just paint some of these materials and see what happens. So I'm gonna set my tool strength to one, and let's maybe set my brush size just a little bit bigger and zoom in here just a little bit closer. Let's paint some snow. You can see that the, the landscape uh, turns checkerboard and that's because it has to compile some additional shaders. But I'm now able to paint snow way down here in the valleys where normally my auto material would only apply snow, you know, up here at these higher elevations. Um, but because I'm doing it manually, I can now apply the snow in this area. So let's try uh, let's try painting some slope material. And again, it's going to compile the shaders. But now I can paint the slope material here. And you can see that it's painting dirt in this location um, because my slope material paints dirt in the flat areas and rock on the slopes. Well, let's see if we paint what happens if we paint flat. So if we paint flat here, you can see now that I'm painting grass. And our flat material paint paints grass at low altitudes, uh, but it paints my moist stone material at high altitudes. So if I come up here where the snow is and I paint in this location, you can see that now it's painting moist stone. So I've set up these layers so that depending on the altitude, they're either painting one material or another. Now I don't necessarily have to do it this way. If I wanted to, I could create individual layers for each of my individual materials. But instead, what I've decided to do is use my layers uh, to paint just the flat material or just the slope material and still allow the altitude specific variations to happen automatically. So you can choose if you wanna use uh, the layers and add additional layers here so that you can explicitly paint each and every one of your materials, you can do that, uh, but that's not what I've decided to do. All right, so now we have the ability to paint these materials specifically where we want them, anywhere on the landscape. And so now I can go back in and touch things up, put more grass where I think it needs to be, uh, maybe put more cliff rock where I want it to go, uh, and just really clean up my landscape and customize it and make it exactly how I want it to be. Now the next thing that we're gonna talk about is how to apply uh, vegetation and grass and trees to this landscape. Uh, in the first tutorial series that we did on creating landscapes, all of these items were placed by hand. I hand placed the trees. Uh, I used the vegetation paint tool to paint the grass down. And it was all a very manual process. Well, next week, we're gonna look at a tool that automatically places vegetation based on where the materials are. So it'll place some vegetation for the grass, some vegetation for the dirt, uh, different vegetation for the cliffs and I can control that um, just based on the rule sets that I give it instead of having to hand place anything. So that's gonna be a cool tutorial. Hope you guys come back to see that one next week. And if you like today's tutorial, uh, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna keep watching uh, more tutorials like this. Thanks for your support everybody and I'll see you next week.